The Open Alpha 2.9 update for DCS World came with a plethora of great new features to improve the game's overall performance both for flat screen and for VR gamers in the form of DLSS and FSR. I want to go over what I believe are the best overall VR settings to gain the best visual to performance ratio across the board. This is more aimed specifically at Quest 2 or Quest 3 headsets, however, actually it pretty much applies to every single VR headset available. You'll just have to use different tools. For instance, if you're using Steam VR headset, you're gonna to want to use the Steam VR tools. And if you're using something like a HP Reverb G2 or a Pimax Crystal, whatever, you're gonna to want to use the OpenXR toolkit for Windows Mixed Reality. For those interested, I'm going to be using the Quest 3 in this video. And the system specs of my PC are as follows. I have an AMD Ryzen 9 7800X, not the 3D model. I have 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM running at 4800 MHz, and I have a NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti. Firstly, I'm going to be specifically using the Oculus desktop app. I'm going to navigate to devices, and I'm going to click on the relevant headset, in my case, the Quest 3. Just note that if you're using a Quest 2, the settings are practically the same. It's only if you're using something like a CV1 or a Rift S that they won't be. Once here, all I'm going to want to do is scroll down to Advanced and open up Graphics Preferences. Here, I heavily recommend that you use the baseline refresh rate of 72 Hz. Reason being is that upping it just really doesn't make a difference in DCS. In fact, it eats away at the performance and the resources of your PC and gives you very, very little in return. Next, when it comes to rendering resolution, I just have it set to automatic at the default as we'll be making changes to the rendering resolution elsewhere. So in this case, I like to have it set at 1x and just leave it at that. If you are struggling, you can drop it down if you want, or if you want to, you can pump it up. It's really up to you. Next, we're gonna to go to the NVIDIA control panel. Obviously, if you're using AMD, use AMD Catalyst, and I'm going to go to manage 3D settings. Here, instead of being on global settings, I'm gonna to want to go to program settings and select DCS from the drop down menu. If it's not available to you, all you need to do is hit the add button, find the DCS executable and add it in. Problem solved. The first setting we're gonna to wanna to do is go to power management mode. I like to set this at preferred maximum performance. Next, I have threaded optimization on. You don't really need this. I only have a set on because it makes me feel better about myself. The next setting we're gonna be using is virtual reality pre-rendered frames. This is a very, very interesting setting and can make a massive difference. However, it is very dependent on whether or not your CPU has the headroom to really take advantage of it. In my case, my CPU has more than enough resources to take advantage of this feature. And if yours is of a similar ilk, I heavily recommend that you set this to three. What this particular tool does, which is really interesting, is it pre-renders frames before they're processed by the GPU, which helps to decrease ghosting and overall stutters in game. It smooths out the game a significant amount. So I highly recommend that you have this on. But that is everything for the desktop stuff the out of game stuff let's head into the actual in-game settings so starting off from the top left we've got the resolution i have this set at 1920 by 1080 uh, because i was taking the screenshot but this particular setting just doesn't matter you don't need to worry about your resolution you can set it to the lowest you can put it and it isn't going to make a difference monitors don't matter just like with resolution however the res of cockpit displays i do have this set at 512 you can do 1024 and really you probably should next obviously anti-aliasing is being dealt with by the upscaling technology so moving on to that we're using dlss uh, i've got it set at performance if you watched my last video on the dlss update you'll probably remember that i complained a lot about the ultra performance and the performance mode because they introduced a huge amount of smearing to the huds of the flaming cliff three jets however that particular bug has been fixed now and actually the performance mode is giving me the best performance and i have the sharpening set at 0.7 textures i have set at high they should just always be set at high otherwise everything just looks terrible terrain textures i have set low shadows i have set at medium i have the shadow blur set on secondary shadows i have off and triple s i have off as well Visible range, I have set that at medium. And civilian traffic, I have set off. Clouds, I have set high. And despite a lot of comments on my last video, uh, I will continue using cloud set to high because unfortunately, when using a Pico 4 or a Quest 3 or a Quest 2, 
having the cloud set to ultra gives very little in terms of visual fidelity improvement because there is usb artifacting over a link cable and the clouds just look the same <laughs> whether you're running on standard medium high or ultra clouds uh, the only difference is actually shimmering and how close it is to you on ultra it's as far away as it can be high is the second furthest away medium is a little bit close and becomes a lot more noticeable and on standard it looks horrible so have it set to high because i'm not seeing the difference and because of that i don't want to lose performance in having something that i'm not actually visually seeing the benefit of next i have water set to medium I have SSAO set to off and SSLR set to off as well. They eat huge amounts of performance and yeah, it's just not worth it. Lens effects I have to set to dirt and flare. I like having both on. They make no difference to performance and it just looks pretty. Heat blur I have off. It looks terrible in VR. Motion blur just looks terrible in general and depth of field I also have off. Moving on to the sliders, I have the clutter and grass set to 800. In a lot of cases, I'll just turn this all the way off. It only really matters if you're landing or if you're flying helicopters. And I don't really do much of that as I'm usually getting blown up in the air. And helicopters just defy physics and I uh, hate them on principle. Forest visibility, I have that set to 80%. Forest details factor, I have set at 0.7. Uh, scenery detail factor, I have this at 0.6. And the preload radius, I have set at a hundred thousand chimney smoke density i have off it makes no difference to me and gamma i have set at 2.2 external field of view makes no difference in vr unless you're watching back tracks and the lod switch factor i have at 0.1 anisotropic filtering i have set at 16x and then everything else is pretty much standards raindrops because who doesn't want raindrops next we're going to move over to the also special vr tab and here are my settings here. Obviously, we've enabled the VR headset because that's probably the most important thing if you want to play DCS and VR. Next, moving across to pixel density. This is basically super sampling. This takes the resolution of your headset, bumps up a couple of points and makes everything significantly sharper. I toyed between 1.5 and 1.3 and although 1.5 looks so much better than 1.3 I was finding quite a few frame drops when I was in busy environments whereas I wasn't having that with 1.3. 1.3 still looks great and you'll see in the examples later on but if you've got something like a 4080 Ti or a 4090 I would recommend bumping this up to 1.5 and really get that overall crispness in the visuals. Other than that, pretty much everything else is the same. No bloom effects, MSAA mask size is at 0.1. I don't even think this is actually doing anything at the moment. That's all well and good me telling you what settings to use, but what's the point if you can't see for yourself what it looks like? So what I have done is I've put together three separate scenarios covering a range of different situations that you might find yourself in. Now, all of these videos have been recorded in my actual Quest 3 headset. I use SideQuest to bump up the frame rate to 60 frames per second when recording. Um, so there will be some visual artifacting from that as the DVRs in the Quest 3 is not the best. However, it does give you a significantly better representation of what I'm actually seeing in my headset over what the DCS mirror will give you on the PC. As I find usually the DCS mirror is significantly smoother and doesn't show as many blemishes as what you actually see in the headset and recording in the actual headset will show those. So if there's any smearing or ghosting, you will see that. Now starting off, we're just flying around, looking around, and everything in my books looks really good. And if you can see in the top left-hand corner, we were seeing a solid 72 frames a second, and the frame time is looking excellent. We're going to speed up shortly to have a look at this other jet. And now I'm going to be honest with you right now, I am terrible at formation flying. It's just not my thing. I like to shoot jets, not sniff them, but... For the sake of this, we're just going to have a little look around, kind of go up and down to see if there's any ghosting. And generally speaking, it's super smooth. Now we'll do some low level flying and see that it's still at 72 frames a second. Looking around, everything is looking good. Moving up to some smoke here. This usually has quite an impact on the frame rate. But once again, everything is super smooth. You can see some frame time issues jumping in there and you can see that there are a couple of drops down to the mid 60s but in general the frame rate is still super super smooth 
as we fly through, drop to 68 frames a second there. But the overall smoothness is still impeccable. I'm not having any issues with this. Flying over the treetops here, everything still pretty smooth. You can still see the frame time kind of kicking up and down, but it's not really exceeding uh, the frame time to cause stutters or slowness or any noticeable input latency or kind of headset latency. Just look at the wings as we pull hard. As we are using DLSS performance, there is aliasing taking effect. It's not nearly as intense as I would have expected it to be, but uh, everything's still looking super, super smooth, super good. And overall, I was massively impressed with this. Moving on to the second scenario, we're going to be using the same scenario that we were using in the last 2.9 update video I made, putting away the mirrors because, you know, I don't want to look at myself. This particular mission is really good just to kind of stress test the performance as you've got multiple aircraft in the same vicinity as yourself, whether it be helicopters, fighter jets, etc. You'll have lots and lots of them together at any given time, around about 20. It's not a huge amount. It's not very often you're going to have hundreds of jets in the same place at the same time. As you see, everything is still super smooth. Not a tremendous amount of issues or stuttering or ghosting. In fact, the ghosting is the thing that surprised me the most. I'm very used to playing DCS and seeing like a jet ahead of itself and kind of almost vibrating in the air. But in this case, nothing too special going on here. Frame rate is still absolutely solid very impressed and yeah so moving on to the next and a final example for you we are jumping into a multiplayer scenario i was initially going to do this on enigma's cold war server but i found myself spawning at the furthest possible airfield i physically could from the actual action and by the time i got to the action the server restarted so we hopped across to growling sidewinders pvp server hopped into a j11 because I just love cheese machines and we got on with our day and as you can see frame rate is still absolutely impeccable and in fact the ground is looking exceptional frame rate is still sitting at a solid 72 frames a second and overall th i'm very very impressed with the online performance says usually you'll have a, se a set of settings for single player and a set of settings for multiplayer as when you hop into multiplayer servers there's usually a lot more going on and your pc struggles but in this case i was really impressed to see that i didn't need to make any changes to improve the overall performance as i slowly but surely realized that i got my air breakout but i was really happy with this particular session as i was able to get into a couple of dogfights kind of engage a few bandits and uh, get a couple of kills which i was very very pleased with as I don't often get kills on um, Growling Sidewinders servers. I'm usually getting blown out of the sky by M120s. But in this case, I was able to uh, get a couple of kills. But yeah, after a quick change in HUD color, I was on to my next unsuspecting victim. And all the time, the frame rate is still sitting at an absolutely impeccable 72 frames a second with basically zero to no dips at all on the servers. I was really impressed as multiplayer servers do tend to impact performance quite massively. But uh, coming up on my next and final victim of this particular run, in this case, just getting myself into a good high probability kill area. Just dump him on the nose, just bonk him. Just send that missile out and bonk right in the face. And as per usual, all I do is send another missile out, miss entirely. And accidentally pull a little bit too hard on my stick and break my wings off. And that puts an end to this online session as I eject safely. I hope you found this video helpful if you have please consider giving the video a like and subscribe as well if you are down there that's going to be it for me today if you want to see any more dcs content or if you want me to cover off any other bits and pieces especially when it comes to the vr and dcs please let me know in the comment section below and i'll make it happen but until next time
Ciao.